Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 10th. First up, I have not seen the movie The Martian as of yet, but I've had some friends see it. I had the, one person say it was worth one viewing, and they probably wouldn't go back to see it again. Another person said that it was fantastic, the best movie that uh, Ridley Scott had ever directed. And so uh, this is from Live Science, The Martian. What would it take to grow food on Mars? They say this is kind of a spoiler alert because they talk about the astronaut growing the food in the movie. But if you've seen the trailer, you've already seen. I mean, obviously, he's not going to stay on Mars for a year and eat dirt. He's obviously, that's going to be one of his strategies, and it shows it very clearly in the trailer. You're going to see that he's trying to plant food and grow it to be able to stay alive. So, But this is the science behind it, and... It seems like the Martian soil, because it's been basically close to sterilized by the UV rays that penetrate the very thin atmosphere, or almost totally lack of atmosphere, basically you're just talking about little sterile particles and they're so loosely bound together that if you tried to water them, it would just, any kind of water would just seep through and there's no nutrients in the soil whatsoever. So they say the chances of really growing a lot of different crops is pretty, pretty sparse. But there are some exceptions there, too. There's some things like um, tomatoes that have uh, gotten there. And uh, let me see on it right here what it says. They uh, they actually did some soil. They, they Based on the Viking samplers' idea of what the soil is about, they said that they could uh, actually make a pretty good replica of what the Martian desert soil is. But uh, it actually does... Um, do pretty well with some plants. A 2014 study in the journal PLOS One showed that tomatoes, wheat, cress, and mustard leaves grew particularly well and even flowered and produced seeds in simulated Martian soil for 50 days without any fertilizers. In fact, these hardy plants grew even better in Martian soil, or regolith as they call it, than in nutrient-poor river soil from Earth. So that gives us a little bit of hope right there. I mean, might be enough that you could actually get growing for a start. And like they say, if you're if you're mixing it with other organics or human waste or anything like that to uh, kind of give it a little bit more uh, slow draining properties, you would probably be able to make it into pretty decent soil pretty easily. So if you get a chance, check that out. That's on Live Science. And as usual, all the links to all the articles will be down below in the description box. This next one is from my friend William H., Six is from Gizmodo, Giz, Gizmag, 16 cameras in one light, promises smartphone size and DSLR image quality. This is 16 little mini cameras. They're uh, medium quality, something maybe like you would have on your smartphone or something like that, but 16 of them operating together at various uh, focal lengths and things like that. And with the combinations and some software, I don't know what you would call it, some software massaging of the photographs, they claim this thing can do as good or even outperform a standard DSLR camera and has an optical zoom range between 35 and 150 millimeters and it's in the package that's maybe just to me it looks like just slightly thicker maybe than a smartphone but not really that much bigger maybe a little bit bigger too but I mean this thing is just small very small compared to your standard DSLR camera and one of the reasons why people say they don't get the shots they would really like to get is because they don't want to drag their bulky DSLR around with them all the time and they tend to have their smartphone with them anyway so I can see this technology being used in other things besides too but for right now you can uh, it says right here after you shoot the output of those 10 cameras is combined oh I guess it was 10 didn't it say 16 up here okay maybe it's 10 10 cameras is combined in an imaging algorithm creating a much larger photo than an individual small sensor could handle in a wider dynamic range than your typical smartphone sensor yeah that's the other thing too if you have different cameras doing the scene you can also get higher dynamic range so you can penetrate the shadows and then also keep it from uh, keep the brights from washing out since the image also contains multiple focusing points you can select what you want in and out of focus so it acts like those light cameras that I've talked about for before where you don't have to suffer with anything such as a out of focus uh, picture like you used to and with this you can even change what points you want to be your depth of focus so you get different effects from that so uh, Sounds like a pretty good, decent camera and everything. Um, let's see. This imaging processing involved in combining shots from different focal length lenses boggles the mind. How do you correct for distance compression between a zoom lens and wide so that the images even line up? Presumably there's some very clever people looking at it, uh, working on it. Uh, I don't see a price on this one right here. So, must Oh, here it is. U.S. 1699 or maybe 
1299 if you pre-order now with a $199 deposit. So looking at late U.S. summer 2016. So you're going to be waiting almost a year for it. So hopefully it's worth it. I guess if you have to consider buying a DSLR plus all the lenses, 1600 bucks even isn't that bad. So. And this next one is from Mashable. If you're a part of Facebook or maybe even if you, you know, even know people on Facebook, the thing that's been going around is this stupid thing about the creator of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, having a dislike button and totally untrue. But what it is is they're going to try out some new additional things. If you hover over the like button, you're going to get a choice of six emojis that you can possibly use. I'll put the picture up of what the emojis look like. It's uh, one's with a heart, one's a super big smile, uh, one's like a wow, and the other one's like embarrassed. And I'm not sure what every single one of them are, but yeah, it's just six sets of emojis, and people in Ireland get to try it out now. So I guess if you're a Facebook user and you uh, live somewhere in Ireland, you're probably all over Ireland, you'll get a chance to try out these uh, six little emojis on Facebook. Not that that really, I don't know. <laughs> That's such a big deal. I would rather they just spent the time to get Facebook working better all the time. I still have it messing up on me from time to time, even on multiple browsers. But it, it's still 90% of the time it's basically functional, so no big deal. I've also talked about, I think sometime in the past I talked about, this is a, just basically photographs of what it would look like if you drained the Great Lakes. In the Midwest we have a, a huge reservoir, one of the biggest reservoirs of fresh water in the world in all of our Great Lakes combined. So this is actually the video part of it instead of the uh, just the maps and the still pictures and stuff like that. But uh, this is one, uh, and it was sent in by Navy Thomas 8. Thank you, Tom. But this is about a 41-minute, 42-minute documentary, and it's called Drain the Great Lakes. And it's, uh, it was made about a year ago, but I think it goes along really nice with the article I did before. If, even if you didn't catch it, you know, it's kind of kind of neat to look at. I think there was another special somewhere somebody talked about with me about um, they have something about drain the oceans or what the planet would look like without the oceans. To me, that stuff just kind of fascinates me. So if you get a chance, check out the YouTube video. And last up, this is a Kickstarter project. And it's only got one day to go, but this is Saturday now, so by the time most of you people are viewing it, it's going to be over. But no worries, you will see this thing come about. They were asking for 150,000 pounds, which would be what? $200,000 U.S. approximately. Well, they ended up getting 505,621 pounds, which is what, about three quarters of a million dollars? It's called SteadXP, the future of video stabilization. And they've got, there's a video here you can watch of the whole thing and the difference. It, it looks like very good stabilization. I mean, they show you the before and the after. Um, very similar to what happens in software, too, if you have software editing that you can do it. But to me, you lose quite a kind of a lot of quality when you do it in your software editing. If you turn on stabilization to try to make the image, you just uh, you have to either suffer with the choice of am I going to go with the stabilized, smoother image and lose a little bit of quality and have kind of a more fuzzy picture, or am I just going to live with it being shaky? Well, with this thing, it's a little attachment. It goes to the back of a GoPro and it works with Hero 2, 3, and 4. And you can also get one for other cameras besides, like uh, they show a Lumix. Uh, DSLR camera here. If it has a hot shoe attached to it, you can do it that way with a little unit. So they've got two basic units and between the accelerometers and the gyroscopes inside, basically what they're doing is they're just all the way through your shot. Anytime your camera moves, it tracks the movement exactly of what your camera is doing. So it's not like a post-production thing where they have to guess what they have to compensate for. This is actually recording what they have to compensate for. So that's the real clue, the, the real, uh, to me, the real uh, the real excellent part of this having a, a device like this is you're not having to make any guesses. Everything is just pre uh, pre recorded in the data as far as all your movements of the camera, so that they can match. Um, it'll still need some post processing software to go with it to put this together, but you'll put the two things together and you will get a really nice steady image. And it looks like they don't say an exact price here, but from what I see, the people are pledging and what they're um, promising in addition to the pledge, they're letting people with like a 170, 180 pound pledges get this camera. So I'm guessing somewhere in the range of even 140 pledge, let's see, yeah, 110 or 4. They're probably talking somewhere in the range of $200 US. So when it finally does hit market, if you can come up with about 200 bucks and you've got either a GoPro camera, a DSLR, or something with a hot shoe, um, something to steady your shots if you're really into action type of filming and you want to make your things. Uh, it, to me, it looks about as, as smooth as if you had some kind of special tractor crane shots by a professional crew. So 
I think it's well worth the money. But if you get a chance, check that out too. They got several videos you can actually look at to compare. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody, and thank you, everybody that contributed. I will catch you next week.